have uh, cataloging rare books as linked data a use case, and our speakers are Paloma Graciani Picardo, who you may remember from about 40 minutes ago, um, and from the University of Texas at Austin, and uh, Brittany Washington as well. So uh, please, um, I will make Brittany the presenter so you can advance the slides. Okay, thank you so much. I'm going to jump right in. The Ransom Center's deliverables for the linked data for production phase two project can be organized around three main areas. Analyzing mark to bit frame conversion, defining local workflows for linked data cataloging, and developing an application profile for special collections materials. To get started, we took stock of the tools that were already available to us and those that were in development concurrently. Library of Congress had already created a BitFrame Rare Materials profile, which was a good start, but we needed a more granular approach to the item level profile. In order to flesh out both the item level and instance profiles, we used the Art and Rare Materials ontologies, which are BitFrame extension ontologies for modeling bibliographic metadata in the Art and Rare Materials domains, developed during LD4P by a joint task force consisting of members of the Rare Books and Manuscripts section of the American Library Association, Art Library Society of North America, and the Society of American Archivists. The team who developed prepared documentation, including modeling recommendations and a set of shackle profiles that allowed us to get further insight on a potential implementation of ARM. Some controlled vocabularies that we relied on for lookups are um, periodo, which is scholarly definitions of historical, art historical, and archaeological periods, the Library of Congress name authority file, which provides authoritative data for names of persons, organizations, events, places, and titles, Getty art and architecture thesaurus, legatus language of bindings, which is a thesaurus of book binding terms, and the rare books and manuscript section control vocabularies. The thesauri provide a standardized vocabulary for retrieving special collections materials by form, genre, or by various physical characteristics that are typically of interest to researchers and special collections librarians. RBMS controlled vocabularies are actually not linked data friendly, but a colleague and fellow cohort member, Tim Thompson at Yale's University Library, developed a local lookup and shared that with the Rare Materials Affinity Group so that we could use them in Synopia. So before we move on, I just want to take a step back to consider why special collections libraries can benefit from linked data and why we need our own profiles. Much of what distinguishes books and special collections from others is at the object level. Binding, book plates, ownership inscriptions, and manuscript annotations all of which are copy specific, are important pieces of data for scholars. For cataloging to serve the needs of the community, copy specific metadata is an essential part of records. Zommel bond are items consisting of two or more separate works bound together after having been issued and are a common occurrence in rare book cataloging. These are difficult to describe in a bibliographic context because they're different works and manifestations but it's all just one object with important physical characteristics that we need to be able to record. Although we've used it for decades now, MARC is not an ideal format to describe special collections materials. For rare books, we need to be able to record details about the object itself, like how it's constructed or what's known as the format of the book. The format of the book tells us how many times the book's sheets or leaves of the pages have been folded, which would result in different sizes and costs of the book. And it would affect printer's work of typesetting. In Mark, we put the format in parentheses at the end of the physical description in the 300 field and add a 500 field note for the signature statement. And the signature is the guide that printers use when printing the text and folding the sheets. Many hand press era books are described in bibliographies and we reference these to catalog. In MARC, we record the citations in the 510 field using a standardized text string. As I mentioned before, copy specific details such as previous owners and annotations 
if there are leaves missing, missing, and there often are in older books, and many other details are super important to our users. But in Mark, we have no other recourse but to put these details as a text string in a 590 local note field. For provenance ownership names, besides in the 590, we also record the authorized name in the 79X fields as well. So for us, Link data holds a key that will allow us to fully record and relate aspects of the object itself to bibliographical concepts. <clears throat> a benefit to being in the LD4P2 grant cohort was that we were able to develop community around shared interests in the linked data world. We joined the Rare Materials Affinity Group, which still exists today as part of LD4, and in this group, we were able to share experiences and questions with others whose projects focused on rare book and other special collections materials. We developed a log of user stories to help us plan for the profile development stage. This user story is a PhD student who is researching embroidered bindings. They need to be able to find example of these types of bindings in a library collection. Catalogers will need to be able to record binding information at the item level as embroidered bindings are most often created post-production by individual owners. Entities used are genre, notes, items, and bindings. We have another user story um, where a researcher who is studying private libraries and how books were used by their owners in the 17th century. They need to be able to search for books that have ownership inscriptions and annotations. This data is, once again, copy-specific data that requires the cataloger to record the presence of annotations, signatures, and other markings through the markings and custodial history entities. And now over to Paloma. Thanks. Um, one second. So being fairly new to the B-Frame environment, our first activities were geared towards understanding how to use the tools available for us to model those aspects of the rare books descriptions relevant to our users. The modeling of this slide uses both B-Frame and ARM, the ARM extension to address previous second user story by using the marking class of the ARM core ontology and B-Frame contribution, agent, role, and date properties. If needed to be more specific, ARM presents a number of subclasses that refine the semantics of markings. Marking information <clears throat> is closely related to the custodial history of the item. In addition to the core ontology, ARM also has a custodial history ontology dividing the custodial event class in a series of subclasses, including ownership, among others. The combination of these two modelings should allow our graduate student or scholar to retrieve all the relevant data for their research on the 17th century private <coughs> libraries. This modelling here should address the first user story, the PhD student who is researching embroidered bindings. It uses the binding class of the ARM core ontology and the has type property of the CDOC CRM ontology. Furthermore, the combination of ARM, B-Frame, and Dublin core also allow us to provide additional information such as parts of the binding, physical condition, and binder information. This last example shows other relevant information discussed by Brittany for the hand press era books such as book format and signature statements modeled using B-Frame and ARM. Because B-Frame is a model, a model purposely flexible, developing application profiles is key in order to shape the resulting RDF descriptions. Our local application profile development took based on the generic rare materials LD4P templates, which include mainly B-Frame elements, and look at enhancing the item resource template. We choose the Forsheimer Library, a collection rich in material evidence information, as our test use case, creating the Forsheimer profiles was a great opportunity to dive into the ARM ontology extension. Differ different from B-Frame, which is loosely based on the Ferber conceptual model, ARM follows an object-oriented description model highly influenced by CDOC CRM. The first HRC ARM test templates are full with modeling flaws and inconsistencies. However, those discussions and hands-on experience were crucial for us to get the full scope of the ontology. Eventually, we rely on Yale's ARM resource templates developed by Tim Thompson to serve as the basis of our current HRC profiles. The HRC rare materials profiles are a set of five main resource templates for the description of work, instance, item, bound with or SAML band, and bound with item. A series of auxiliary templates allow for the description of binding, citation, 
Custodial History, Signature Statement, Collection, and Temporal Coverage. It mixes components of the Sinopia-based profiles based on the Library of Congress ones, the Yale templates, and further local customization based on HRC-specific needs and catalogers' feedback, which has been critical to fine-tune the templates and identify pain points. This slide includes links to the actual templates in Sinopia stage, where they are currently stored. So I should add that they are still a work in progress as the ARM ontology continues in an active development phase. Also relevant to our project was to understand the implications of converti converting the legacy copy-specific data populating our library catalog to B-frame. A little bit over 19,000 mark records corresponding to our pre-1700 holdings were submitted to the Share BDE initiative, for which 19,149 graphs were created, including descriptions at the super work, expression work, instance, and item level. By analyzing these graphs on a local triple store implementation, we were able to identify several pain points related to the transformation of fair books description. It comes as no surprise that the current mappings mainly address a broader array of use cases within the library general collection. Copy specific information such as the one register in 590 and 790, 791 mark fields had not made the move to our new B-frame data set. A series of Sparkle queries helped to further our understanding of the data set and identify other potential areas of concern for special collection practices. This here is an example of a Sparkle query I used to retrieve all printers with their related instance. Because all contributor access points are mapped to different work, regardless of the role, one must query the work description in order to retrieve printers, which is quite counterintuitive within an LRM environment. There are a few other aspects of these mappings that evidence potential data loss for the description of a special collection resources. It makes sense to assume that for a programmatic conversion to work at scale, it is necessary to leave aside local descriptive practices. However, it is this local data that allows for identification within the rare books catalog. It is not obvious to anticipate that a joint effort coming from the special collections community will be necessary in order to address and support transformation scenarios for those edge cases based on special formats and object-oriented descriptions. Our cataloging team is made up of only three people, Paloma, one assistant cataloger, and myself. While Paloma and I have had some interest in linked data for a while, our cataloging assistant comes from a traditional MARC cataloging background. With this in mind, Paloma and I did Sinopia training through LD4P2 first, then brought what we learned to the cataloging assistant. For BitFrame training, we watched training videos provided by Library of Congress together and we started a reading group to familiarize ourselves with, co with conceptual models. Studying the library reference models, CDOC and Ferber, was helpful in helping us to wrap our heads around a non-MARC environment. To catalog in Sinopia, we used pre-existing MARC data. As we catalog, we record questions and issues and then meet weekly to discuss and create new policy, update the profiles, or take questions to the larger community. We've been doing this weekly for several months and each meeting feels like progress. We record data for the work first, which is a profile we kept more or less the same as Library of Congress. Uh, we then move to recording data at the instance level and then we record data for the item. And what you see here are snippets of the instance and item template. So just for ending, the Ransom Center is looking at identifying a sustainability plan that allows us to continue to engage with the different community and scale our current experimentation into a production phase. A key element is the development of efficient conversion tools that allow us to publish native B-frame descriptions created in Sinopia on our local Mark 21 based library catalog. B-frame to Mark conversion is one of the expected deliverables of LD4P current phase, closing the loop, and our plan is to continue testing and providing advocacy for data transformation of rare books, while also contributing feedback to ARM. Additional linked data efforts at the center include our current participation in the program for collaborative catalog cooperative cataloging, Wikidata pilot, as well as testing local discovery tools with implementation of a wiki-based instance. 
Thanks so much again to the SV Program Committee for giving us the opportunity to share our rare books catalog in use case today. Our contact information is in this slide. If anyone has any questions regarding the project or feel free to drop them on the conference messaging tool. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Paloma and Brittany. I didn't even need to give you the two minute warning. Um, so uh, thank you again for, for all of this. Um, uh, there are, there is a question. Uh, Julia, would you mind chiming yeah, in? That, I saw it. It's the um, the question if the ARM, as the ARM effort, in any way related to or looking at the TEI models uh, for manuscript description. And it even says, if, even though if it's not manuscript specific. specific. Uh, thanks. Um, so we are not directly involved on the on the ARM um, working group, uh, and this is probably something that that group should be addressing. I don't know if anybody on the audience is part of that group. Um, we have been mainly focusing at this point on rare books, so that's that's what we were, have been following. Oh, I think there just came a question now. It's always funny when we're 30 seconds uh, before you. Um, if you could talk about potential challenges for one, displaying the item specific information in a general discovery interface when rare book material is mixed with the standard description of public teams. And two, the other part of the question is, um, about converting rare books description back to Mark 21. Yeah, that's a question that we talk about all the time. And, and I think the, the fact is we really just don't know what a public interface is going to look like. So we're, we're not sure what the trouble is going to be yet, but we, I could say we do anticipate there being challenges. We just don't know what they, they're going to be yet. And then was there also another question. Do you imagine users actually using Sparkle in order to find out about their questions? Um, <clears throat> I can answer that. I, I that's not exactly what I'm was envisioning. Uh, those were tests that that we did just to get more familiar with uh, the data model of the of 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 the RDF that we received back. Um, um, Ideally, the user will have some sort of user interface and those type of uh, queries will, will already be pre-populated pre for them. Um, still, um, it, is, it is useful and very handy to have a, a Sparkle to be able to, to explore the data and, and um, users that are familiar with the Sparkle will definitely be welcome to use it. And Laura, it looks like I accidentally skipped your second question about converting rare book description back to Mark 21. That's something that we're starting to do right now. And we're finding kind of the same issue is that a lot of the, a lot of the granularity that we get in linked data, there's just no way to represent that in Mark. And, and so from the kind of beginnings of converting the data from um, from Synopia into Mark. It's just been that we haven't been able to get any of the item specific data back in there. Um, but I do think that's something that we're going to continue working on. And we're also trying to find, um, you know, there are a lot of Mark fields that we just don't use, but that are available to us that could help us. So it's just a matter of, of trying to find something that works that age old way of dealing with Mark, I guess, is just trying to make it work. I I will also add to that, uh, if I have like a second, um, that um, 
because copy specific uh, information, each institution is going to have their local practices to record. It's it's going to be more complicated to find like one one conversion that works for everybody. Uh, so I guess that's like one of the major pain points is institutions will have to like figure out either on their own or or at least prepare their data so that it can be transformed it's it's definitely not going to be an easy one